this whole thing, this whole movie thing, it was real for me. I think we went into the project knowing we wanted to do something uh, around social justice. In a prison, it's kind of scary. Consequences 10 times more for the same thing that a white person would have done for a black or Mexican or a person of color. This film is, is kind of a PSA, in my opinion, about uh, youth incarceration. Uh, we throw a lot of numbers at people, and um, you know, I think it's it, more than anything something to try and raise awareness. And also, you know, um, as far as the narrative goes, kind of present the audience with something that might, uh, you know, evoke an emotional reaction. Former employee of Metro East, um, Jennifer had a, a, a big hand in. in, in Getting this project off the ground, you know, along with Tolilo Marfil, I think they, uh, you know, they were at least the first two people that I talked to about the project. It's about kids and like the prison and like, um, like kids in prison in general and stuff like that at a very young age. I think it was important to try and uh, incorporate, you know, some reality from some of these kids, that, you know, and. Um, in particular, some of the letters that the, the kids wrote for the film, not all of which made it into the film, but I think the ideas behind um, you know, what these kids have experienced, what they thought was important to talk about in this story, I think we really tried to, uh, to kind of inject that into the, the story, whether it, whether it was from text on the screen in some cases about uh, you know, just statistics that in some cases, these kids are part of those statistics, um, you know, and I think that's pretty powerful. Um, I think the writing part, I just helped a little bit with the um, writing of the paper, like, oh, it's like the letter because, like, the letter was should go say. But it was actually, honestly, it was sad. Like, I was low key tearing up when I was reading. It was sad. Yeah, well, my character was kind of based on me. It was, it was basically based on me. Because what I was going through and what I'm going through right now, because um, about me living with other people except my mom and stuff like that, and me stealing cell phones and stuff like that, like, it was, it wasn't like, I couldn't relate to him. I couldn't relate to that character. I knew that character. That character is me. And for the person, the prisoner, um, they just want to wish that they didn't do all that and that they just hope that, uh, People still accept them as who they are. Really powerful place to shoot at. It's quite an opportunity to go up there and kind of have have, rain, you know, full run of this entire empty prison. And I thought it, you know, it'd be super powerful to get those kids in that actual space instead of kind of trying to create a jail cell or something like that. I thought actually getting them into this facility, I thought that would be the really the only way to tell this story in particular. We tried to really schedule it so that the kids would have opportunities to get behind the camera, to use the slate, to set lights up, try to get them in, in all the departments, as many departments as we possibly could, um, without overwhelming them, without overwhelming ourselves as mentors mentoring for uh, the director role, you know, which I thoroughly enjoyed. That was like my first time meeting Adam. So it was like, at first, like first 10 minutes, we act like we knew each other our whole life. It was just like, we clicked like that. And then he held me throughout the whole, I don't even know how, like six hours we were there. So it was real fun. Talilo, he's cool. He, he's a musician, just like me, so I can relate to a lot of things. He, like, made scenarios. He made scenarios for me. If I had to be mad, I had to be sad. If I was, like, recording something, he made scenarios for me so I can really feel passionate about it. He was in predicaments that I'm in right now, so that's why I really relate to him. It was cool. It was like, have, it was like a big brother type thing. Actors, actors gotta go through a lot of stuff. Actors, the takes, all that stuff, setting up stuff, and then like 30 seconds of action time, then like 10 seconds of like setting up. That's me, that character is me. So it's, it wasn't like, oh, 
I gotta switch my face. I gotta look in the mirror and I gotta be like, I'm this dude. I am this dude. That's who I am. That's who I grew up as. That's that's who my friends are. So it wasn't blind to me. Yeah, I played as the prisoner who cousin got shot. You know, supposed to act angry. But yeah, I was. <laughs> I think it was kind of hard because you know I didn't want to hurt myself. Um, I was a hopeful prisoner. Like I was hoping to get out, and I wasn't like I wasn't gang affiliated. I wasn't mad or anything like that. I just wanted to get out super bad. Their actions can affect others because, like, um, in the film when I was doing my part, I got a letter from my sister, and it's like it affected her in so many ways. So, like, that's what it means to me. It was real for me, like. During takes, like during breaks and stuff like that, I was like really looking at the sales. I was looking how this stuff was set up, and I was like, "This is not something I want to go through. This is like I, I pray, I pray every day that I don't have to go through that, that I don't have to be in JDH, something like that, because of some dumb decisions that I made." So it was, it was real for me. Like the the orange jumpsuit, it was no acting thing. It looked like a future for me. And I don't want that to be my future because I have so much I have so much to offer to this world. You know, to to see each one of them kind of get to experience different roles on a film set. You can you can move shuffle these kids around into different areas, and it's pretty evident within you know a half hour hour whether or not it's something that catches them. And I think it caught every one of them, you know, uh, on some level. And you know, I would love to see them. Um, uh, grow, you know, and experiment with film themselves. Um, I think every one of them is immensely talented, and I was actually kind of blown away by the performances in some cases. I want to make movies, and I want to be in movies. Uh, acting, I always wanted to be actor. But before sports, rapping, all that stuff, I always wanted to be actor, so it was like real fun for me. And it was also like a learning experience because what if that really was me? And like just reading that letter it already made me sad. Just think like that could really happen. So just reading it like, yeah. Like just knowing it could actually be like that in like two years, it could actually be like that. So it was a good learning experience. It was fun because, you know, I got to act with friends. You know, I got to explore the jail, see what it was like to be in a jail cell. It was fun. Camera gets heavy though. Like not heavy, like it just, your arms get tired. You're just recording for a long time. It's always a challenge. I think, I think one of the biggest ones for me is just emotionally dealing with the subject matter like that. Um, it's pretty difficult. It's pretty heavy stuff. And, you know, it, it can be kind of a scary thing to think about. And, you know, some of these experiences are theirs. And, uh, you know, that's, that's heartbreaking for me. It's heartbreaking to imagine all the roads these kids could travel that, you know, potentially and statistically, that could be a reality, which is why I think these projects, projects like this are so important. Uh, I think it raises awareness. I think it is something to involve these kids that maybe are at, you know, at risk. I think maybe that was the, that was the, the, the biggest struggle. Otherwise, you know, everyone that was involved that put in their hard work actually made it pretty smooth. A whole string of people volunteered there precious time to make this project happen. A lot of people from the independent film scene in Portland supplied gear, of course, Metro East. Couldn't have, wouldn't have happened without the support of Metro East. But, uh, you know, some people from uh, Portland Filmworks, some people I've worked with for years, really, in my opinion, are the ones that kind of made this all able to happen smoothly. These are people that I have the utmost faith in as far as managing gear and making sure that everything goes smoothly on set. Just the whole process, like seeing how movies are made. The sad part was when the camera started rolling and people were talking like, like the actors were talking and stuff like that, and you hearing the story, you hearing the story on what they're doing. That was the sad part because people actually go through this every day. Like this prison short film, it's not something you don't go through. People get locked up. People 
have to stay in a jail cell, a cubicle, for 23 hours every day. That's, it's, it's crazy. I think first and foremost, it serves hopefully the, the kids involved. I think, again, getting these kids involved in programs like this, which I would love to see more of. It teaches while it's fun. It presents an opportunity for these kids to, to experience something that maybe they had no idea was something that they could just dive into. Filmmaking, you know, and um, you know, it's something that I think unless you're kind of involved in that, that production, especially as an adult, it seems kind of uh, just outside the realms of just of work. And uh, for these kids, I think, yeah, you know, suggesting to them that possibly you could continue this, this working, uh, uh, filming, and someday you could potentially, this could be your job. And how amazing is that? This can be real life, and it's really happening. So you can't, you can't let people dictate your future, because at a snap, at a snap just like that, you can be locked up. You gotta surround yourself with people that want the same goal as you to be successful. That's the key to success. I feel like kids my age, the younger, or older to be, like. Like if they watched it, can help them. Like especially if they're like doing bad things and they're already on a path to go, like to jail or something, it could help them. And they're like, damn, the reality is real. Um, I think they would try to stay out of trouble because, like, in a prison, it's kind of scary. I think the target audience are, is um, is potentially people that know that there is an issue with youth incarceration. So I think maybe people that know that there's a problem but aren't quite sure how bad it might be, I think, in watching this film and seeing these numbers that are, in some cases, numbers right here from Oregon, I think that could be pretty powerful for people that uh, um, you know, haven't, haven't been exposed to the reality of how, um, how terrible it is. And youth incarceration is out of control, and there are options. And while we don't necessarily dive right into those, what those options are, uh, we do make, you know, there is a suggestions in there. And, you know, when we talk about community-based programs, which we, you know, we do talk about that, that um, statistically, when we're talking about youth and their first offenses, how much more successful programs like that are. And oddly enough, what a great opportunity to get kids involved in film making with some, a place like Metro East. I think when they see it, they'll be like, Two things, wow, like these kids did a great job. And like, they're gonna feel like they should show it to their friends. It will be like a heavy impact on them, it will affect them a lot. I think some of the most disturbing statistics to me, other than the, the blatantly obvious how many kids are actually incarcerated on any given day, are the racial disparities. It's absolutely terrifying to me to, uh, to see numbers that suggest that a young African-American boy is you know, essentially five times more likely than a young white boy to end up in a jail cell. The, the numbers, when I first saw it, I thought they weren't real. Like, that many people, 93% girls, are going through that, and a lot of them are underage. That's not like what's wrong with what's wrong with the world, and just blacks, Mexicans, Native uh, Native Americans, all all the races have to go through that every day. I mean, it's sad but true. Like at the same time, like it's just sad thinking that all these kids' futures and stuff like that, it's like they're not gonna be able to take advantage of it because over like a silly mistake or whatever it is that put them in that place. And so it's just sad thinking about it, but also it's like, it's just reality, so you have to think. 
thank God it's not me in that position. So I have to make the most of my life, but not sit here and get caught up in all this. I think I think the, the prison system itself absolutely needs reform. I'm probably a close abolitionist when it comes to the prison industrial complex. Getting them while they're young, in my opinion, is is the way to prevent um, this recidivism and and these kids, you know, becoming adults and then going to prison. I think uh, the day that uh, no one can profit off of a prison is the day we see prisons start to crumble. The legal system is biased. Is I believe is whitewashed. White people they in prison and stuff, but it's like black people they can get charged, or the um, consequences like 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 the burden is like way more heavy, or the consequences ten times more for the same thing that a white person would have done for a black or Mexican or a person of color. No, I really don't think it's fair because. You know, most cops here are white and they're trying to look for black and brown people to arrest because they think that they're probably in a gang or something trying to do something bad. Education, first and foremost. Community-based justice, community-based um, restorative justice programs, phenomenally successful. Community-based programs. Um, getting kids involved in um, activities tailored for them, places like Metro East, supporting programs um, like Get Real, I think it's invaluable. I think, I think they are life-saving programs, and I think that's a real easy one. You take four or five kids off the street and put them in a film program, you're doing something phenomenal for the community. You know, those kids, I think it could, it could be the, the difference between them um, succeeding and I think, or, or failing, and, and waking up the day after being part of a film production, I think is an easy way to encourage positive decision making. You know, the idea that um, they could come back next week to do the same thing if they make good decisions um, and use a camera and make a, a, a music video or do whatever, you know, whatever they want to do, film their thoughts, put their anger into. Um, into film. I think these are, these are great options. I think that's a, a really easy solution for, for me anyway, um, something that I can do. Get the mentors. Bring some mentors. Bring some mentors to the schools. Make sure that people are in the community doing stuff, productive. Make sure that not every kid likes sports, so not every kid can play sports. Not every kid likes instruments, so not every kid can play instruments. But there's something that kids like that will get them intrigued just like that. So you gotta have mentors for somebody that wants to play a video game club, somebody that wants to, in a chess club, you gotta have, like, you gotta have different mentors. So if they're getting attention by getting mentors, get, getting attention from the mentors, I bet you that they're not gonna they're not gonna be in JDAs. They're not gonna be doing bad things. There's like two things. Like it can keep kids out of trouble, but then when there's kids like me, like we, when I like, if I was just to watch this randomly, I'm like, that seems fun. And then I wanna get in trouble. But I only got sometimes. Don't think I'm a bad kid. I got goals. My hope for the future is um, a well-educated populace that uh, takes social justice seriously. On a very small scale, this film that we made, you know, it brought a lot of different people together from all sorts of walks, and it was very powerful. Just a sunny day, everybody playing outside, you know, just everybody having a good time instead of people doing bad stuff and shooting and stuff. But if I had to live in a perfect world, that's what it'd be. Just everybody getting along of so people trying to shoot at different people. If the struggle stopped for everybody, and I know it's not going to stop, but if the struggle stopped for everybody, it would be a better world. It would be a better place to live in, the world I want to live in. A world where my dad was back in my life.
disbelief, shock. Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty amazing. I mean, I uh, I think uh, I think it's fantastic that we live in a place where you could present a film that is absolutely critical of an infrastructure and have that infrastructure respond with honors. <laughs> so, because, you know, overwhelming, there, there's definitely a, um, in that film a, a, a critical eye at the system. And, you know, I think uh, I, I'll give them that, you know, that they, you know, they recognize that film and, and you know, it was important. When I heard that, I was, I was pretty blown away. Still am kind of blown away, so, yeah. I have a lot of hope that it resonates and sticks with those kids, that, uh, you know, that, that they are of an age to recognize how important it was, for one thing, but also that if they set their mind to something like this, they absolutely have the ability to go to the White House. They've, kind of, they've done that. They can never say that I can't do something like this, because they have. I was amazed at the talent, not only from our, our talent, but uh, you know, the other kids from all over the country, uh, you know, seeing what they're producing. I, it was amazing to me, and I was more than impressed. I think it gave me a lot of hope um, to see the content that these kids were producing. Um, the ones that I loved the most were topics, you know, they're, they're tough topics. And uh, I certainly wasn't thinking along those lines when I was their age. So to see that, I was, you know, I was really impressed. I think that the trip was, was amazing. My hope is that it, uh, you know, it gives these kids hope. I just desperately hope that they wake up and when they are, you know, when it comes to decision making, that they recognize they're not stuck, they are powerful, they have a voice. And it's possible that if they take the time and the effort and they have the due diligence, that they can make a change. Who knows the ripple effect that a film like what we did could have. And I, I hope as they get older, even in some cases now, they realize uh, that, you know, how, how strong that can be, how powerful that can be in society a visual element like film. Dante, where are you going into, buddy? Jim? What's this place? It's the White House. <laughs> yeah. Turn around. Welcome to the White House. She's also a Welcome to the White House. Hi, welcome to the White House. Thank you. Welcome to the White House. Thank you. Welcome to the White House. Thank you. Welcome to the White House. What's up? It's all my fault. All I did was still a cell phone and that's in the past. Please, just please don't be so I can't even be there for the funeral. I'm gonna find out who did this. If 
fuck was out there? This is what I have had. Mom says you're going to miss my birthday. I can't wait to see you again. I remember all the times you protected me from bullies. I don't know what you did, but I do know I love you. And know when I see you again. We will go out to pizza at the pizza place down the street. We could even get a Hawaiian pizza. I know how much you like them. I can't wait for you to get out. I know whatever you did, it's not you. I love you, brother.